Okay, so my name is Meshack Stennett, Shack on these streets. Um, originally from the Bronx, New York. And I got to Dell State because back in the 90s when I started thinking about furthering my education, we didn't have a lot of resources in my community, meaning there wasn't a lot of uh, older peers that attended college, um, even in my family, you know? So it was shocking to me when I was watching TV one day and Cosby's daughter went to Hillman College. I was like, what the hell is that? You mean there's a college where it's just for black people, where it's like cool and I could go learn while at the same time being around people that look like me and have that same vibe? Like, it was over. I said I was going to Hillman. I went and told my, I went and told my high school counselor like, yo, sign me up for Hillman College. They was like, um, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Can you pick a real school? Like, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? And then school days popped off. And it was like, oh, snap. HBCU is what it is. So when I started doing my research, found out there was HBCUs two hours, three hours away, right here in Pennsylvania, Delaware. And the first trip that we decided to make was to Dell State. So it was me and my man, Delano. You know what I'm saying? Rest in peace to Delano. Uh, we took the ride down here. And it was the weather in New York was cold that day. I'll never forget. I mean, sweater weather, and then we got down here, and it was like 70s, and it was like, whew, I don't even know. It was like it was like reality TV meets school days meets real life. Like it was just popping on campus. The student center, everybody was outside. There was music playing all over the place, and I told my moms right then. I said, "Look, I found why I'm going to school." You know what I'm saying? And I ended up attending the HBCU and graduating from one. Nice. Love that. That's dope. Um, you get the DSU first day. DSU first day. Um, orientation first off. I don't know how they do it now, but during the summer we would come in for like a three-day orientation and stay on campus. I didn't even want to go back home after that orientation <laughs> because we had so much fun. So you fast forward to the first day, come on campus. I'll tell you a funny story. Um, it was in the uh, science building. I was going to my class and first day of classes and I go to drink some water for the water fountain and I put, I turned it on and the pressure was super low. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, I gotta, you know, bend down and get it. I go bend down and drink the water. This shit shoots all up in my face <laughs> in front of everybody. I don't know nobody and then people is laughing. So that was one of my first memories of my first day. But uh, that kind of set the vibe, man. Dell State was just fun. You know what I'm saying? I enjoyed myself. Um, even though they kicked me off campus my freshman year, man, for that snowball fight that took place in the cafeteria. Like, it's good. It actually came up on CNN not too long ago. You know what I'm saying? Because they made reference to... No, it was Fox News, not CNN. Fox News made reference to the ridiculous snowball policy at a HBCU, specifically Delaware State University. And when they contacted the school, they said they implemented the policy over 20 years ago, and they didn't know why. But we all know the reason why. All right? So... They'll say it was super fun. Shout out to all my peoples that came in 92. You know what I'm saying? Um, we just lost my man Pep. Shout out to him. Everybody else that's not here, unfortunately, it's too many people at this point to name. But just know that you're still riding for us. You alumni angels, DSU Circle. Like, we ain't never going to forget you. DSU Circle. What's DSU Circle? How'd that come about? DSU Circle is a affinity group. Um, formerly of the university and the association, but no, we're an affinity group of the alumni association. Um, we're a group of alumni that basically stay connected. There was a void at, you know, at one point um, with homecoming specifically and with just keeping connected with the people that you grew up with. Because at the end of the day, you know, I came to school in, in 92. It was Delaware State College. Right. But when I left, it was Delaware State University. Now, I wasn't there for 20 years. It's just that that time frame was a transition. And the same way the university grew up is the way that I felt I grew up. And, you know, my brothers and sisters, that was in there with me. So after we graduated, we weren't really staying connected to the level I thought was necessary. And homecoming was not entertaining for us because it was really geared around students and seasoned 
older, older generations of alumni. So me and my peoples that was coming back that wanted to have a good time, party, pop bottles, you know, like we was doing it in the, in the cities that we were at. We weren't getting that um, level of entertainment. So, you know, us, we reached out to the university and the association <clears throat> to see if we could collaborate with them to create something. And at the time, they were disinterested. So we created our own lane. And that's where the DSU Circle started. We started that first year doing the Duncan Center, um, which became legendary. And that grew into a weekend of homecoming festivities, as well as alumni networking and social events outside of homecoming. Um, and our social media networks just really, that just kept people together. So that is the DSU Circle. And I got to shout out my partner. It's only two of us, you know what I'm saying? My man SWAT. It was just the two of us that's been doing it for, for all these years. We we did our first homecoming. I actually saw the videos on YouTube back in 06. Shout out to, to Day Day and everybody else. So <clears throat> it's been a long time. And, and as a lot of you know, we, we've taken a hiatus from doing homecoming events and alumni events. We just want you to know, I mean, I'm telling you this from me directly. Um, it's not that we don't want to be there with you and celebrate with you and provide you what you need. It's just that... Um, you know, me and SWAT are just regular dudes working. <laughs> we got families and kids like everybody else, and the resources and the time and everything else that we're putting together, we do feel like the university especially could reciprocate that and we could have a better collaborative relationship. If we could get that, then believe me, trust me, homecoming, everything alumni based out of Dell State will be on a level that you just wouldn't imagine, you know? So hopefully, I, I hope that, you know, we do have new blood, you know, we have a new president, the first female president, you know, so salute to Dr. Mishu for being named the president of the university, as well as a new alumni association president. Uh, shout out to Cliff Burrell and his whole um, cabinet. So I'm hoping that there is going to be change, you know, um, because essentially what we were doing with the DSU Circle should be done by a, a bigger group. But, you know, we still here for y'all. Whatever y'all need, you know, you can always hit us up. That was so dirty, <laughs> but I love it though. It's the truth. It's the truth. It's like it's like I'm gonna let y'all know the problem, but we're here. This is what we done. Is yeah. it because you know it's so many times I've that like we went to homecoming last year and it was whack, and people are running up on us like yo. I had a, a young lady say to me yo, you ruined homecoming. How could I ruin homecoming? We've only tried to help it. What people don't realize is these are all separate entities. Delaware State University and Delaware State University Alumni Association are two separate entities. The university has funding as well as revenue that generates from tuition. The association has alumni generates, you know, money through dues, not to mention their own, you know, scholarship funds or whatever they have going on. The DSU Circles is two regular alumni helping out. And I think people thought that we were a bigger organization that we were, but you're not paying dues to be a part of the circle. Everything that we've been sharing and doing and putting out for all our alumni businesses and, and initiatives and agendas, we're doing it for free. You understand? So us stopping was simply saying enough is enough. Like any relationship, whether it be business or personal, has to be mutually beneficial. If it's not, then some person is going to feel like they're being used or abused. And when we felt like that, we did not want to project that negativity onto our alumni family. That would have been wrong. So before that started, and we started charging all types of crazy prices, I mean, and once again, shout, I went to Morgan Homecoming this past weekend. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my man P Drama, Zeke, um, DJ Mike, all those cats. They had Dave Chappelle pull up to their homecoming, right? They had the Def Jam tour part of it. And Dave Chappelle came through and talked about the purpose of voting, right? And the vibe at that homecoming was just dope. And it goes back to my HBCU experience and me coming to an HBCU. Like, I didn't go to Morgan, but when I go there or I go to Howard Homecoming or anywhere, the vibe is just all love. Like, love is love. You know what I'm saying? Just because you went to an HBCU, you know? So they can't take that away from us, you know? And like I say, even with that day party, we was doing 1,500 people we had at the last one, right? Or you could eat food, and I'm not talking hot dogs and crackers. It wasn't Vienna sausages. We had jerk chicken. We had Caribbean cuisine. Not to mention, you know, we could say it now, top shelf open bar. And it was free of charge for everybody. You can go to any homecoming, whether it be HBCU, PWI, or anywhere else, 
and you're not going to find that. And we was doing that, just using our own personal resources. So all you people I was complaining to my older party cost $25, $30 a year because we're taking that revenue to make sure you had a good time on Saturday. Not to mention the sponsorships and whatever else. But like I said, hopefully one day we will be back. I hope the university gets their minds right and contacts me and we can work together. Because if not, I promise y'all, 2019, we're going to have a day party somewhere. Nice. All right, take me back. That's my boy John, a part of production. Yeah, yeah. He just said he just said that was a good one. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, John. Um, I want you to take me back, man, to um, the calf, and I want you to tell me about the, the cafeteria workers. The food, oh man, the I love them. That like what that your, your, <sighs> where'd you used to sit in the calf? Oh my like, god! First off, we had the calf walk, right? That shout out to my man Milt. You know what I'm saying? Because the cat, everything was a production, right? <laughs> First off, the cat for steak and shrimp night was unbelievable. If you could get you an extra ticket or two for steak and shrimp night, you was definitely popping. Like, cats was selling those. If there was cryptocurrency back then, cats would have been pushing that, them steak and shrimp tickets, right? And shout out to all the cafeteria ladies in there, right? Because they wasn't just, we didn't look at them as them serving us. I felt more like it was like my aunts, you know what I'm saying? Because they would tell you like, yo, you tr like you wilding, like cool out. You know what I'm saying? Take this chicken and go about your business and stop acting up. You know what I'm saying? They actually cared. So it felt different. Once again, it was that family setting that vibe. You know what I'm saying? So the cafeteria, once again, um, I do apologize for what happened at that snowball fight <laughs> when we ran in there and terrorized the cafeteria. It was all in fun. We were just young. We teenagers. We grow. You know, they kicked me out of school. Eventually, I got back in, got my um, degree and everything else. And it's funny because when I look at like, you know, I've been invited to come back to the university at times and talk to when I got invited to talk to the incoming freshman class of young males. I just thought it was hilarious because I thought to myself, do you all remember kicking me out? Dr. Motley sat right there <laughs> and said to me, um, the bus for New York leaves at 12 o'clock. Be on it. I said, Burr? <laughs> I tried to be slick and hit it with the joint. Mind you, I'm, you know, you young, you acting tough. I'm like, yo, now nah, I don't even have money for the bus. No problem. Go to the cashier. She'll give you $50. Be on the bus at 12 because if not, it's going to be the police that you'll be riding with. Word, that's how you're going to treat me? I bet. Went out, called my mother. You're not going to believe this. After I heard my mother on the phone, I went back and they like, Dr. Bradley, yo, don't do this to me. She still sent my ass home. But uh, yeah, we finished it out, and I'm proud to say that I'm an alumnus of the university, and just here, just HBCUs, man, y'all know. Do, do you remember at uh, home Erica and her girl in the cafeteria that everyone was trying to smash? What? No. <laughs> Excuse me. No. <laughs> yeah, there was there was a, a, a vaguely. Uh, I might, I might. You might have just touched my memory. But yeah, there was some um. College was very fun. <laughs> I would definitely suggest anybody who's considering furthering your education or going on HBC or PWI, I would suggest just going to HBCU campus and just taking a tour. You know? How about the walk of shame? Come across that field. Chicks coming across that field with the hair wrapped. Early morning. You'd be like, wait a second. That's the same outfit from the student party last night. Student center party. They don't care. I mean, you saw it. No, no. The walk of shame. No, the worst walk of shame was back in the day. If you trying to creep walk of shame and then one of them skunks catch you on campus. It's over. <laughs> it's over. You be late in your dorm room. You just smell it. You be like, yup, somebody got caught. <laughs> yo, speaking of student center parties, yo. Student center parties was the best. I probably saw every top hip hop, hip -hop and R&B act. And that little student center, the original, the MLK student center. I'm talking about when the walls are sweating, you can't even see through the windows. I saw everybody. You know what I'm saying? Hove, back then, KRS, Mary J, little anybody. You name them, they was there. You know what I'm saying? And then it's, it's crazy because we took that to Mingles, right? So Mingles was the first nightclub to open up in Delaware, in Dover, excuse me, that... Um, provided urban entertainment. 
So shout out to my man Wade, my man Big Wade from NY. We was in class together. He told me, I'm about to open a club. I'm like, work? Shout out to also uh, Bobby and Tony, my man Tony, African Tony. Hello, my brother. Every time you saw Tony, he said the same thing. But um, they opened up that club, Mingles. And I know the year, it was 1995 because it was my 20th birthday. And they invited me to do the party in Mingles. And we had a, when I say it was popping, it was popping. And I went outside and the line was around a block. So that turned into us doing parties at Mingles, right? That turned into homecoming at Mingles. We was bringing all the top DJs from Brucey B to Doo-Wop to, I mean, if you think about it, you named it. So that's why when we didn't get the level of entertainment we needed as alumni at homecoming, it was mandatory that we created our own lane, you know? So I am honored to say that me, SWAT, all my friends that played a part of it because a lot of people helped out was able to <clears throat> create homecoming history at Dell State and to change the culture. You know, um, one thing I do want to say is with us leaving and the void that I see now, the only issue that I have, and it's not just Dell State, and for all you promoters and all that, yo, don't take it like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking honestly, and if you do it, it's what it is. And um, I think that the essence of what homecoming is, we've lost it, right? So where everybody's saying, yo, we throwing these expensive parties and all that, and blah, blah, blah. These door prices is looking more like All-Star Weekend than it is Homecoming Weekend. And when we started, yes, I do admit, we started, we were the ones that started saying, yo, 25, 20 in advance, 30, whatever the case may be, because we had to pay a lot of money for those venues in order to provide a suitable place for you to be entertained. So the only way that we could do that while still giving you a day party the next day absolutely free was by charging those numbers. But when you have people out here that you don't see all year, and all of a sudden they're popping up charging crazy numbers just for you to come and get together and celebrate, I think that we've missed the point of it. <clears throat> I did see a party um, going on, $10 all night, love is love joint, going on at a club below. I think that's the way, that's the movement right there. I'm hoping to see more things like that where we can just kind of get people together. You know what I'm saying? Like Saturday night, you could do whatever, you could charge whatever, but damn, not every night. You know, so Friday night, you know, I know me and my peoples, I saw they doing like a 20th year celebration. So a lot of us would be at a law Friday night. That's for sure.